If you're looking to learn how to attack in a chess game, this is a masterclass in attacking by Karl Schlechter. He started off the game with e4, the king's pawn, and his opponent Richard played d5, the Scandinavian defense. This opening is not so popular anymore. Nobody plays it. Takes takes and then white plays knight c3. Developing the knight with a free tempi attacking the queen. Now in this position black has three options. Either move the queen to a5 or go to d6 or even move the queen all the way back to d8. In the game black played queen a5 and the game went on with d4 c6 knight went out bishop came out to g4 pinning the knight and now preparing e6 bishop e2 knight came out castle e6 it is very important to develop the bishop out before you push this pawn otherwise the bishop might get trapped on c8 and now white played a very interesting move knight e5 offering the trade of the bishops so that after black takes the bishop the path of this rook is clear the plan is to move this rook to d1 d3 g3 and prepare an attack bishop e7 bishop g5 castle and now the rook lift starts rook d1 black went back to queen c7 preparing knight d7 try to maybe trade some pieces and complete the development white continued with rook d3 knight d7 and rook came to g3 white is ready to launch an attack the worst thing that black can do is move one of these pawns and that is what he did he pushed g6 taking the knight on e5 also does not help because if black takes it i can simply take back with the pawn attacking this knight and after the knight moves bishop h6 is already there look at this rook he's not on a1 but on g3 already attacking it winning the pawn if you push you lose the rook so with this rook on g3 black feeling the pressure he panicked and played g6 the way to exploit any pawn push is to attack it and so white played h4 preparing h5 to trade maybe open up the h file it is very tempting for black to play h5 right now to block out h5 but that does not work as white can play bishop f4 not only you're looking at the queen you're also threatening knight g6 disco attack opening up the king and if black takes white can simply take back and then queen h5 look at this rook pinning the pawn so black tried king g7 another passive move a better approach would have been maybe to go to d8 get some kind of knight takes knight d5 going the more pieces you trade the easier it is to defend but he went for g7 and h5 came in anyway you might think why can black not take the h5 pawn looks like a free pawn that pawn is never free one option for white is to simply take the bishop you get the bishop you attack the rook he's not in time to take it and if he takes the knight you take the rook with the check and then you chop off the h5 knight remember that pawn is pinned and now black is a rook down taking the rook would not change anything as you can take the rook with a check and then you take the knight and again white is one piece up also after knight takes pawn there is a brilliant idea to sacrifice the queen on h5 and after black takes you take the bishop give a disco check king is pushed into the corner and then you take the knight the queen cannot take the knight because bishop f6 is a checkmate you might think after f6 black is fine but white can simply take the rook and then simply give a check and bring the other rook into the play the king is going to get hunted rook is coming to the f file and white has lot of play so with that many threats on the line he decided to simply take the knight and go to g8 another passive move putting the knight on g8 trying to cover f6 and h6 attack is the best defense but he went passive now here you might be very tempted to trade your bishop for his bishop you must have heard you know if you trade this bishop the dark squares will be weak but the problem with taking this bishop now is the knight can go to f5 so in the game selector made a brilliant decision to go back with e3 keep more pieces on the board but also this bishop might help out in the attack look at this h6 square maybe take it out help with some f4 f5 you might be wondering what about queen takes pawn free pawn there is no such thing as free pawn bishop h6 free queen
Black takes the bishop, you win the queen. If the king comes out trying to save the queen, then bishop g7. The black king has to lose the queen. So he tried rook d8. And now white continued with another pawn, f4. Prime for f5, pressure out g6, or maybe move the rook to h3, go some g4 business. The knight went to h6, trying to get to f5, but he went rook h3 anyways. Knight f5, attacking the bishop. You cannot let him take your bishop. So white went bishop f2, keeping control of this diagonal, avoiding any checks, and now preparing g4. Queen a5 came in, g4, kick back the knight. If the knight goes to d4, remember you do not want to take that knight for your bishop. You should move the queen to e4. And after rook d7, you cannot take the knight. Keep your tactics going. Bishop takes knight does not work. Rook takes is there. You cannot take back as bishop c5. The bishop pins the queen and you lose it. But the idea behind queen e4 is, after rook d7, you will play king g2. Not only you are threatening to take the knight, you also want to go to h1, double up the rooks, take on g6 and then take on h7. But in the game after g4, he decided to go back again. Another passive move. And now you might be tempted to play king g2 and go with the double idea. But selector played king h1. Why? The idea behind king h1 is to avoid the bishop trade. Black should not get bishop c5 and trade out the bishops. So after rook d7, he can go to e3. Not only this bishop covers the d2 square so that the rook cannot enter. Also, this bishop looks at the knight. Maybe f5 comes in and then you take and double attack. If black plays rook d8, doubling it up, you can actually just take on g6 and go f5 right now. Double attack on the knight, f6 is coming, game is over. So black tried bishop c5 once again. Please, let's trade. You know, trading is not for you. So he went back to c1. This is why king h1 was so important. If the king was on g1, he could not move the bishop. The bishop would be pinned. Now this bishop is doing such a good job. Not only he looks at this knight behind the pawn, he also covers d2. So when black doubles up the rook, he cannot enter. Also, he protects b2. So no pawns are hanging. Black went back with knight g8. Then white played queen h2, doubling up the pieces. Time to take on g6 and go in. Beat him up. This position was going out of control already. The best move was to go to h8. Let him take on g6. Because black can take back with the f pawn. And the rook on d7 would defend it out. But after king h8, a better way for white to continue would be knight here. Simply trying to get to g5. Get one more piece into the attack. But with so much pressure on him, he fumbled. He doubled up the rooks. White simply took the g6 pawn. If you take with the h pawn, the rook goes in and f5 comes. The f file is gonna be open soon and the king is toast. The game was beyond saving, but he tried to take with the f pawn. White took on h7, king went to f8 and f5 came in anyway. One last golden trick, queen a6. The queen is attacking the rook. What should white do? You have done all the hard work. If in this moment you play queen g2, defending the rook, you lost the game. Because now he took with the f pawn, not with the h pawn. The rook is looking at the rook. You can simply take the rook and you lose. So you might be, okay, I'll just save the rook to f3. Even that is a mistake. Now black has the opportunity to go to d1. Sacrifice the exchange and then enter with queen e2. The black queen and rook are beating you up. He wins this game and you're too slow. And if you do not take and go to g2, that does not help. He enters anyway. You take the rook, but you lose the queen on h2. So queen a6 is very tricky. You can't go to g2, you can't go to f3. What to do? Selector played rook e1 and black resigned. Because after rook e1, if black takes the pawn with the g pawn, bishop h6 comes in. If he takes with the knight, you can simply take with the queen, rook check, and a checkmate. After bishop check, you do not take the bishop but move the king. Then queen h5 comes in anyway. And taking the f5 pawn with e does not help. This time white can play e6, attacking the rook. The rook moves and again 
Push up at six. King moves. Rook h8. No way to save this knight. If you don't take on f5, maybe try queen c4. Then white can continue with the same idea of push up h6. The king moves. You go to h8. Attack the knight. King f7. Then you take on g6. The king cannot take the pawn as this is a checkmate. So that is why after rook e1, with bishop h6 on the card, e6 on the card, black resigned.